This is a truly wonderful ode to the human hands and, and craftsmanship. And really, ever since the 19th century, William Morris, that era, industry has somehow been seen as the enemy of creativity. Now, your video suggests that a little bit. You know, it's a technological conference. We didn't see a computer, we didn't see a sewing machine, nothing. But surely technology plays a part in this modern world of yours, doesn't it? Sure, absolutely. Uh, it helps us, you know, to develop a contemporary product. Uh, for me, it's all about combining the two. And um, everything I do at Bottega Veneta relies on uh, my four cornerstones, of which uh, one is functionality. And um, to get there, technology is very important to me. Because I find, you know, anything that improves our life, quality, is very important. So if I can make something lighter, if I can get rid of something unnecessary, I will always try to do that. But tell us how that's done technologically. It's, it would seem to me from this video that, you know, by, by plaiting in this extraordinary way the um, leather strips, you're making something that's strong and light. Where does technology come into that? Well, when you weave, you know, the, those leather strips, into a full skin. The skin is, uh, has to have its perforation and those are done by laser cutting because they need to be so precise. You have uh, hundreds of cuts in a skin before you can weave by hand the second skin into it. But uh, I like the fact, you know, that it is done by hand and I like the fact that uh, a bag can only be done by one person because every person weaves in a different way. You could never have a front and a back of a back, for example, done by two different weavers. It's like knitting. You can't pass your knitting on to somebody else because your scarf looks completely different. So that's very interesting. So technology is not the enemy for you, but is it something that you also embrace? I mean, social networking, e-commerce, all these things. Is this part of your th thought process when you're designing, whether you're designing clothes or your leather goods, furniture? Sure, I am uh, all open to the uh, internet and all of that. You know, I, even for my own company, I opened my own virtual uh, website, shopping website in 2001, so even before we started to do this at Bottega Veneta. But I think for this kind of product that we create, I think the contact, you know, to come into a store, uh, it's very important to have that human contact, to be able to talk to somebody who explains, and uh, to be able to smell and touch and wait, lift, feel, and so on. Well, I think you're getting to the nub of an issue here because for all that we've seen in these online presentations this morning, uh, you, as you say, it's very difficult when a product like yours is so much about the essence of luxury, the five senses, the beauty to look, the, the touch, the feel, the smell. So how actually have you tried or considered transforming that to a screen or enabling people to understand? Is it, in a way, through seeing this kind of video so people understand what work went into the projects? Sure. Uh, I still prefer to explain it verbally, you know, but uh, we're working now on our second generation website and um, I think the whole educational aspect is really, really important. I think people really want to know how things are made and what goes into it. I mean, you did also have, I mean, you have on your website still, I think, the Stephen Meisel um, uh, shooting uh, so that people can see it. Now, this is very interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people who are involved in, in fashion actually are tremendously interested in the process of it. So was that, did you specially choose this Stephen Meisel shoot as something you thought that online people would find very exciting and interesting? 
No, it's something that I do every time I work with uh, art. This time it's a fashion photographer actually doing myself, but I usually work with art photographers on the ad campaign, and I always do this uh, B-roll, you know, to s let people see what's going on behind the scene, what goes into it, how are these images created. Because I think that's very enriching. So you could theoretically on the website have a, um, a video of your, uh, this college that you said Bottega Veneta has set up where, where young um, people are being brought into understanding of that. So you could include that on your website to sort of explain to people what goes behind it. Sure, eventually. Uh, take us back to this famous slogan, when only your in initials are enough. It looks pretty visionary now. You know, then when you did it, it was okay, fine. But we were in the height of that sort of mad oligarch buying everything phase. It's so behind us now. Do you ever have that sense that you have been proved right? Well, this is something, you know, that I always I liked. I, and uh, I always thought, you know, there was room for having uh, products that uh, don't spell the name all over them. I, I believe, you know, there needs to be products out there for everybody else. All people are different. We are all individuals, and I am embracing that. But I just thought there needs to be a product for people who don't like that. And I thought it's also a challenge. It's interesting to create something that is uh, signed by the way it's made. And this is what we always try to do at Bottega in the last nine years. And to have a product that speaks for itself and uh, that also shows the involvement of the human hand. Would you ever consider the idea that social networking is encouraging and some websites are taking on of, the, of a dialogue between what you do and what the consumer wants in personalizing uh, your products. I'm not suggesting that people would put their initials on a Bottega bag, but perhaps asking for a similar version, a smaller version, a one with a shorter handle. Is that in your mindset as something that could be done? Yeah, that's what we do all the time. I have been doing this for years. It's what we call uh, special orders. And uh, they all go over my desk. I look at them all and we get this um, daily and it uh, touches all kinds of products from furniture to bags to shoes and so on and uh, there's a very fine line because uh, you have to be always very careful it's not about redesigning something that is a design but it's about personalizing it and uh, personalizing it I'm very for that because I'm all for individualism so that's why down my alley and I'm, I enjoy that very much. You know, I enjoy very much to give uh, somebody something that is unique. I'm quite interested in this reply of yours, Tomar, because you know, you're somebody who really is involved and tremendously interested and knowledgeable about contemporary art. And it's not like this with, with artists, inverted commas, is it? I mean, if you go to them and say, Damien, I love the spots, but can you do them in green and yellow instead? You're not going to get a very warm response, but you were, so. <laughs> but you were really prepared because you know you are an artist in what you do. You are really prepared to uh, sort of bend your ideas, providing the design is not ruined by thoughts from outside. Sure, sure, because I can understand uh, you know the necessities that somebody has, and absolutely. Um, I want to ask Jessica Michaud, have we got a, a question that we want to ask here from our... You know, these are people who are sending by SMS or by tweets. Um, yes. Uh, we do have one question, one particular question that was quite interesting. Um, one of the Twitter people wanted to know, um, how do you actually work? Do you design a bag making yourself by hand, or do you sketch it out, or do you actually use software when you're designing a new creation? How, what is your method of creation for designing a new bag? Uh, for a bag, yeah, it starts usually from an idea, uh, a sketch, and then it goes into a uh, shape. To, and uh, as you know, all our bags are uh, characteristically very soft, and so they're very collapsible. And uh, so when you start what you call a selfie, it's uh, the first uh, prototype, you can see it's always wrong. 
you know, because the material is soft, it, it transforms itself into something different. And so you go from there, you add on where you need volume and so on, and then you translate into the material, then you see if the material works, you might change the material then, and then you go in all kinds of details, like the inner life, uh, handle, functions, and so on, proportions, millimeters. And but how long is this process? It's about six months. Oh, wow. Hmm. Uh, Jessica, another question? So going off that, do you think that some brands are embracing technology too much um, without combining it sufficiently with their heritage? Well, I think everybody has to uh, find their own way, you know. I think uh, the uh, success of a company is uh, to be as unique as possible, to be true to your vision, to do uh, things your own way, and I think that's always what pays off at the end. Well, I think that is a, a perfect response, and I think that whole idea of even individuality in a world when we feel that everything around us with technology is just blurring into the same. It's a very interesting reply and I want to thank you very much Thomas Mayer for sharing your creative process with us. Thank you. Really great. Thank you very much.